Good morning. Good morning. Does anybody know what today is? Father's Day. It's also, oh, by the way, happy Father's Day to all of you. It's also the day that the Lord has made, right? So we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So can we, actually before you stand, I want to introduce some important people in my uh, life. This is my lovely wife, Melanie. Remember, this is my daughter, Meredith, right here. And my brother-in-law, Brian. Uh, my nephew, Brandon. This is Brianna, my daughter. And then, right, Micah, can you stand up there? He's, he's the one refusing to stand. That's Micah, my uh, youngest son. And Whitney should be coming in sometime. Uh, in the back, Josiah, can you stand up? Josiah is Meredith's uh, husband. And this is Thomas. Thomas, can you stand up? And Samuel. Oh, yeah. So Thomas is Brianna's husband, and Samuel is our grandson. Woo! Yeah. Right. So this is our and you had an important announcement, didn't you? And we do have an older son. He's a youth pastor in Virginia, Vermont. And um, so hopefully someday you'll meet him. His name is Jonah. I do have an announcement. So ladies, I'm, I don't know. Did anybody see the flyer out on the hallway bulletin board? No? Okay. So you might catch it on the way out, but I'll give you a, a, a short announcement about it. We're having a watch party here this coming Saturday. So the 27th, the ladies of the church are going to have a watch party. You remember um, spring conference? That never was. <laughs> because the spring was canceled. So um, we are actually going to be having our spring conference watch party here. So it's pre-recorded. We're going to have root beer floats in the intermission time. And so it's from 10 to 12. So it's not a big chunk of the day. Um, it would be a great opportunity for us to get to know each other and have some really much needed fellowship. So if you're interested, um, please come out. We are uh, opening the doors at 945. We're going to start watching at 10. We're going to be um, getting on Facebook Live with Bevy Jo and all her gang and um, letting them know that we're watching with them. And so it's just going to be a fun time, fellowship, root beer floats, and, and the word. So I hope to see you there. All right, one last announcement. So you can see things are changing each week, right? A beautiful pulpit that Bob made. Ooh, so thank you to him. And Chuck has been doing announcements for us, and we changed midweek. So some of the things that he's going to announce, we've changed, but it's not his fault. It's mine, okay? I want you to, want you to know that. All right, can we stand together? And let's worship the Lord.
it's okay to shout and give your best to God. Amen? Amen. Amen.
with the praise of you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We are a grateful people, Jesus. You have done great things for us, and we are filled with joy in your presence, Lord.
We're going to continue the experience of worship and do that by giving you an opportunity to give. Uh, giving is not dues. Giving is our act of worship before the Lord. Uh, so we decided to make it a part of worship. So uh, when we begin singing, I want to encourage you, uh, let's do it this way. If you're in the middle aisles, we're going to start with you. You can come down the center. And you can give in one of those bowls right there and make your way on the outside. So once the middle row has gone, has gone, going, has, has gone, all the people in this section can go. <laughs> See if you're listening. You guys can go after that. All right. So uh, as we sing, let's worship the Lord through giving. Can I just say something real quick? Why not? So with it being Father's Day, I'm just reminded of something that my dad has done for me in the past, and it was on Valentine's Day one year. He wrote me a card, because I didn't have a Valentine, and he wrote in it, there's nothing that you could ever say to make me love you more, and nothing you could ever do to make me love you less. And I'm just reminded today, this is an earthly father's love, and how much greater is our heavenly father's Amen. love? Amen. Amen. And just something to keep in mind today, like no matter what you have done or may have said in the past, it doesn't change God's love for you. And it's the same yesterday, it's the same today, and it's the same tomorrow. And just something to keep in mind as we sing this song about how good our Heavenly Father is. Amen. <laughs>
Chuck's got some announcements for us. <clears throat> Good morning, Wyndham Assembly. How's everybody doing this morning? As you can see, Chuck coming to you from the observation area out here at the uh, Portland Jetport. Uh, doing one of my favorite pastimes, watching planes take off and land and uh, listening to the ATC. Uh, just got a couple of announcements for you this morning. Uh, as you came in this morning, you'll notice that we are asking people to use the doors on the right-hand side of the sets of double doors. Uh, that's both for going in and going out. It's just like as if you were driving uh, through the doors. Well, don't drive through the doors. That would, that would be bad. But I think you know what I mean. Uh, use the right-hand side whenever you go through uh, the door, and that will help us maintain our social distancing here at the service. Uh, speaking of which, you'll also notice that uh, the chairs are all spread out a lot more here in the sanctuary. Uh, family groups can sit together, but we need to maintain that social distancing, especially since we're limited to 50 people per service. So uh, that would be uh, fantastic if you could help us out with that. Also, uh, we know that if you're at the 9 a.m. So 9:30 a.m. service, uh, we know that folks like to catch up and uh, uh, talk with friends and uh, stuff at the folks that are coming in. Um, we asked this week that uh, between the services that uh, those conversations be held outside the church building. It's supposed to be really nice out here today. So, uh, you know, if you could do that, that would be fantastic because we need to reset and get everything set up for the 11 a.m. service so it can start on time. Uh, we are not going to be doing our regular Wednesday evening in-house activities, the kids' clubs, and the adult Bible studies uh, here at the church. However, the virtual Bible study for adults is still happening at 7.15 on Wednesday. Uh, right now, media course Psalm 23 is what we're using this week at session five table. And folks, if uh, you can, watch the video during the week and then uh, join in on the conversation and discussion on Wednesday evening at 7.15. The information for how to uh, sign in on that are on little pamphlets at the information desk there, uh, both for the video conference and the telephonic, uh, telephone uh, conference. Uh, then uh, also for Right Now Media, folks, if you haven't signed up yet, please sign up for that. There's some pamphlets also over there on the info desk uh, that uh, have the information on how to sign up for it. It's absolutely free. And folks, we would uh, love for you to join up with that because it's a huge source of Christian videos and Bible studies that you can do on your own pace. That is it. That is all I have for this week. So uh, in the meantime, you all take care. You stay safe. You stay healthy. And I will see you all again next week. Bye. Um, so, how many of you have father? Or how many of your fathers raise your hand? Okay. Did any of you get any strange Father's Day gifts? Okay. Maybe a, uh, a paper tie. I've worn those before. I loved it. How about a pottery uh, that's supposed to be a cup? A little mangled a little bit. Good. Right. <laughs> we get some interesting gifts for father, and I for being a father. And I was just thinking. You know, if I could pick uh, any gift, what would I ask of my kids for Father's Day? And I want to ask you that question. If you could have anything at all from your children, what would you ask for? 
Would it be a Home Depot card, a Best Buy card? Uh, I, I don't know. What would it be? And, and I began to think about that, and I said, you know, yeah, those things are nice. But the greatest gift my kids could, could give me is to listen to me, right? Because here's the thing. As a father, you know, I've walked through a lot in my life, like many of you have walked through a lot. We kind of can project where their life is going, right? And we sometimes we see them going in the wrong direction, and we're like, no, 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 almost like a kid just about to hit the wall. You're like, no, no, no. Uh, and we want to say, stop, don't go that way. Right? We, want to, we want to say stop Why? because we love them, and we want to see the best for them. We want to see them loving God, don't we? Yeah. Right. So I believe that that is like the gift that I would want. Now, I want you to think about the same thing, except this time I want you to think about your Heavenly Father. If we could give anything to our Heavenly Father, what do you think one of the greatest gifts that we could give Him would be? That we listen to him. How it must hurt, how it must hurt his heart to see us go in the wrong direction, right? And he's like, no, Joel, don't do that. Just listen to me. You know, I believe that that would be the greatest gift that we could give. So today, in the spirit of Father's Day, instead of you fathers getting a gift, guess what? God, our Heavenly Father, wants to give you a good gift. And I like a visual illustration, so we're going to do this together. Let's see what our Heavenly Father wants to give us today. If you have your Bible, you can turn to Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to look at Proverbs 3 and 4. Are you ready? Let's see what the first gift is. The Heavenly Father wants to give you a ruler. <laughs> no, not exactly a ruler, but you use a ruler to measure what? Length. Right, so I want you to think about that. Here's the first thing that I believe the Heavenly Father wants to give you. And oh, before I do that, I need to make one important point. The heart of a father, and this includes our Heavenly Father, loves to give good gifts to his children, right? It brings joy to us. So our Heavenly Father enjoys bringing good gifts to you. And the first one I want to talk about is a longer life. How many of you would like that gift? A longer life. Now let's open up. We're going to talk about these in just a minute. But I've got three in this set. So let's see what's in this one. Heavenly Father wants to give you a pair of sandals. <laughs> Flip-flops. You know what I think about with uh, flip-flops? How many of you have gone down to the beach before? Anybody? You're on the sand and you're, you're listening to the, the water and the wind is against you. And you're kind of sunk in your chair. Isn't that a peaceful moment? Yeah, you just kind of want to encapsulate that. And so the second thing I want you to think about if the Heavenly Father gives you or wants to give you is a peaceful life. All right, we've got one more in this set before we look at the scripture. Let's see the third thing. Uh, I wish we had some kids here this morning. The third thing that the Heavenly Father wants to give you is a smiley face ball. There you go. Or God wants to give you a happy life, a happier life. So I'm going to put this here. I love smiley faces, so this is just to help you remember as you see this. God wants to give you a happier life. Now, there is a condition to this. Now, just imagine that I wrapped up a gift, and it was solid gold something, and I gave you this solid gold gift. And I put it in your hand, and he just looked at it. Would that benefit him at all? No. He's got to use it. And in the same way, God wants to give you these gifts, but you've got to open them. And I'm going to tell you, I'm glad that you asked, how do I open the gifts? So ask me that question. I, open the gifts. I am so glad that you asked that, Frank. <laughs> you can open and receive this gift by following God's rules. Where do we find God's rules? Some of you are holding it in your hands. In the Word of God, it teaches us what is right and what's wrong. And so how does this tie to a longer life? How does it tie to a more peaceful life? How does it tie to a happier life? Let me give you a good example. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, don't be drunk with wine, where is it excess? Okay? 
So if you go out and get drunk, you disobey what God says, you go out and you get drunk, and you get in your car and drive, what might happen? You get in an accident, you might die. When that happens, you had a life this span, but it was, it was shortened, right? So when we obey God's laws, it can lengthen our life. Uh, let's look at the next one, a peaceful life. Now, uh, did I get that? Yeah, we'll get there in just a minute. How many of you are married? The Bible says to husbands, husbands, what your wives? Love your wives. What if you say, that's kind of like an option, and you decide to make your life, uh, your wife's, your wife's life miserable, right? You treat her bad, you talk bad to her. Uh, how is that going to affect your peace level? Well, isn't there a phrase about that? A, uh, an unhappy, happy, happy wife, happy life, right? Uh, so if you go against that, and let me just warn you, if you treat your wife bad, you better watch out for your breakfast in the morning. She might put something interesting in there, right? So that can affect your peace level in your home. What about that last thing? Happiness. You know, I believe when we follow God's word, it just naturally brings blessings with it. Let me give you just one example. You know, the scripture teaches us honesty, right? So I was working for Chick-fil-A. Right? Yeah. Second time I'm getting this in the message. All right. So uh, I was working for Chick-fil-A, and we had this job that we would go out and pass coupons out for Chick-fil-A. And I was working with one other person. And we had to track our mileage. We went to the exact same places. So I logged my mileage. We came back, and I put it, put my mileage down, and she looks at mine, and she puts hers down, and it's like twice as much mileage on there. And I'm like, this is going to be kind of awkward and, and there. So I had to go to the boss and say, I'm sorry, honestly, this is how much that I did. And in the process, because I was honest on that, you know what happened? I got a, I got a raise, right? <laughs> it pays to be obedient and follow God's rules. All right. So you, I want to say something, you know, a lot of people talk about the unconditional gifts of the Lord, but there are conditional gifts. If you do something, then this will happen. And the same way with these, if you want these things, then you have to open it by following God's rules. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next gift. Oh, we need to see the scripture for this. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, uh, reading from the Amplified Version. I like to call this the multiple choice Bible because you have many different options. <laughs> Uh, it says, my son, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my what? Commandments. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Keep those commandments for length of days, so a longer life, and years of life. And I love how the Amplified puts this, a life worth living. Not just existence, but a life worth living. And tranquility, which we could call what? Peace, Peace right? And prosperity. Now, when you normally see that word prosperity, I'm thinking finances. But this kind of prosperity that it's talking about here is the wholeness of life's blessing. So looking back at your life and experiencing the joy that comes from it. That's what God wants to give to you as you open it up through following his word. All right, let's go ahead. I cheated and showed you. But let's look at the fourth gift. God wants you to give you a best papa ever. Right? This is sad. I got this for myself. No. <laughs> but it was for an illustration today. How many of you grandfathers would like to be called the best papa ever? Right? Or how many of you would like to be called the best employee at your workplace? How many of you would, would like to be called, you know, the best dad, the best husband, the best wife? I think we strive for those things. And really what we're looking for is a good name. So one of the gifts that God, our Heavenly Father, wants to give to you is a good name. You want a good name? Yes. When people say Don, all of a sudden that a smile comes across their face. Don't you want that? When somebody says your name, all of a sudden people brighten up. They're like, yeah, that lady is amazing. You know, she loves God. She does this. She does that. That's the kind of what we want. We want a good name. 
Now, uh, you can open this gift of a good name and receive it by being loving and being faithful. So if you're the kind of person, you know, that you love people. Remember last week we talked about putting on a show of love. That's not what God has called us to. He's called us to really love people. And so if you're the kind of people uh, that love people, and if you are faithful, what do you think faithfulness means? Does it mean showing up late to work? Does it mean say you'll do something and then don't do it? Does it mean cheating on people? No. Faithful, loyal, you're dependable. So if you love people and are dependable, guess what? A natural uh, uh, natural benefit for that is that you're going to have a good name. I want that good name. Let's see it. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 3 says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Put them like a necklace on you. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Another way, I'll do a modern Joel translation. Stick a post-it and stick it through your head. Right? <laughs> Remember, be loving, be faithful. Here's what's going to happen if you do that. If you can open this gift. Then you will win favor. So what is favor? So uh, when people see Brandon come because he has such a good name in the community, all of a sudden, they're like, they want to do special things for him. Because that's Brandon coming, right? And all, I know he loves that I'm talking about. I'm sorry, Brandon. I won't do it again. <laughs> but when we have that good name, people want to bless us in different ways. All right, let's look at the next one here. Let's open it up. God, our Heavenly Father, wants to give you motor oil. Did you know that? <laughs> You know what I think about, well, I, how many mechanics, uh, mechanically minded people do we have here? Some gifted in that area? I need your help. Uh, what if I have a leak in my, uh, my oil, see, see it, my oil thing? Uh, you know, where the oil goes through. What if I have a leak in that, with the oil pan or whatever else? And I don't do anything different. Norris, what do you think is going to happen if I just leave it? Uh, bad news, uh, oil leak out, <laughs> things dry up. Yeah, and if it dries up, what happens? Your engine stops. Your engine stops. It no longer works. So this little thing of motor oil can make a huge difference. It's going to make your car go a whole lot smoother, right? All the mechanisms to go smooth uh, than if you did not have that. So here's what I want you to remember. God, your Heavenly Father, wants to give you the gift of a smoother life. Now, I'm not saying that your life is going to be perfect and you'll never have problems because Jesus told us in this world you will have trouble. Okay, but I've overcome. But here's what the Proverbs is teaching. You will have a smoother life and God wants to give you the gift of a smoother life. But here's how you open it. You can open and receive this gift by trusting God and his ways no matter what. Let's say that again. You can receive this gift by trusting God and his ways no matter what. What? Okay, uh, let's say you're a teenager. Do you remember being a teenager? And maybe uh, there's a party going on, and maybe your parents say, you know, no, you shouldn't go to that party. But you know, there's going to be drink in there. There's going to be a lot of different stuff. But you're thinking, you know, I really want to go to that party. And, you know, these, these uh, cool people, these in people, they invited me, and this is my one chance. And you know what, Shirley? This is my real opportunity. If I go to this party, I can be a witness to them. <laughs> while, they're, while they're getting drunk and partying, I'll be a great witness to them. Right? And you try to justify it in your mind. And you, and you say to, to God, you know, God, generally speaking, you know, you're right on this. I, I shouldn't do this. But God, I know a little bit better. You know, I know if I do this, you know, nothing's going to happen. I'll be good. But no, if you want that gift, you got to trust God and say, you know, no matter what I want to do, Lord, I'm going to trust you and believe that your way is the best way. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, we see it. You know this. Why don't you read this one with me? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Let's pause right there. That lean not into your own understanding. What does that mean? We think we know better, don't we, sometimes? We think, you know, generally speaking, God, you're right on this. Or generally speaking, yes, the Bible's right on this, but this is different. I know better. 
That's not what the scripture is saying here. We trust in him no matter what. In all your ways, submit to him. Now, that's a, a dirty word to some people, submission, right? But let me uh, take the mystery out of this. In submission, we see two words, don't we? What two words? We see sub and mission. What is mission? It's what you want to do, okay? So you take your mission, and what does a sub do? It goes down, right? Okay? So it goes underneath. So your mission underneath God's mission. Okay? What you want below what God wants. So in all your ways, put God above what you want. And if you'll do that, he will make your path straight. Now, do I have any barefooters around here? You love to walk barefoot. Any of you out there? Some of you? Right? Uh, I was never gifted with that. But I... <laughs> I had like this neighbor that would go out and run and play, and I'm like, oh, hey, ah, and he's stepping, you know, and let's imagine for a minute that you have to run, and uh, before you is a nice thing of rocks, maybe a pothole, and then the worst of all worst, a Lego minefield, okay, right, you faced those before. If you try to walk through that, you may be able to get through that path, but it's going to be very, very difficult for you. Here's the thing. You know, when you follow God, when you trust him and you put his way before yours, he's going to make a nice, smooth, straight path for you to follow. Amen. All right. Let's look at the next gift right here. God wants to give you, Seth, you might appreciate this. God wants to give you a first aid kit, right? And for today, this first aid kit is going to represent good or better health. How many of you want better health? I sure do. I want better health. All right. Uh, let's look at how you open this one. You can open and receive this gift by knowing your need for God and shunning evil. So realizing, hey, God, I need you every day, every hour. Secondly, uh, shunning evil. How many of you uh, have heard about the Amish? Right? Do you know one of the things that they do when somebody gets out of line and doesn't follow the right way, uh, what do they do to them? They shun them. And this is kind of sad. In some of the strict, uh, stricter sects, you know, some of the people uh, that are even family members, if they go on the wrong direction, they will ignore them. They won't even talk to them. They'll go out of their way not to spend any time with them. They'll just look away, treat them like they're not there. What if we were to do that to evil? To shun evil, to, to disregard it, not to entertain it. You know, some people say, you know, if this is evil, let's... Maybe I can kind of slide, get really close to evil, but not get there. You were worried about me, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> but we are called to shun evil. And if we'll do that, the Bible says that we will have better health. Now, we don't have too many kids with us today. So let's say uh, in the area of sex, if you have multiple partners, and the Word of God teaches against that, right? called adultery, mm -hmm. sexual fornication, all that kind of stuff. If you go against that principle, can that affect your health? You might get a lot of different diseases, right? right? So, and that's just one example that if you shun evil, you can protect yourself from a lot. You can have better health. And I tell you, if you are following God, hopefully your stress level is going down a little bit. Amen? Amen. So, Knowing your need for God and shunning evil will help you. Let's look at that scripture. Proverbs 3, 7 through 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Don't think you know it all. Fear the Lord. Have a deep respect for him and his ways. And shun evil. Don't deal with it at all. This will bring what? Health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Praise the Lord. That's a great Amen. gift. I want to yes. All right, here's the next thing that God wants to give you. God, our Heavenly Father, wants to give you rice crisps or crisp rice cereal, depending on which store you go to. Now, is this enough right here? One is enough, but if I have two, what can I do with it? I can share, right? So God wants to give you enough to share. Amen? Yes. 
All right, let's look at it together. How do you open this gift of having enough to share? You do that by giving to God first. Let me tell you how a lot of people handle their finances. So they get their check, they pay their bills, and then they think about the things that they need. They, they need that new 50-inch uh, screen TV. Uh, they need that finest car. They need to go out to eat to these ex you know, very expensive places. And then when it's at the end of the month, they look at their checkbook and they say, you know, God, I, I really want to give to you, but there's nothing there. And it's sad. You know where the error started? At the beginning of the week. We give to God first. We put God first and we trust him in those things. Here's Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Honor the Lord. So we're trusting, we're, we're revering, we're respecting him by doing this. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the last fruits, the first fruits, okay? First thing, okay? So when you get your check, first thing you should do, right out your tithes and offerings, put God first. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing. Yes. The idea here is that so that you can give to other people and your vats will brim over with new wine. Amen. Amen. All right, let's look at the next gift right here. God, our Heavenly Father, wants to give you the gift of a toy police car. Can I? Is Samuel sleeping? He would absolutely love this, but I'm not going to press it because he's going to want it. <laughs> Uh, how many of you have been to the, uh, the drive-in theater in Wyndham? We went, I think, was it like 16 years ago, something like that, maybe 17? 15, you know exactly. My wife is good. All right, so we went 15 years, to, and I actually know the movie that we went to see. It was Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Okay. <laughs> My family hates that movie to this day. I think. <laughs> but we go to this movie and we come back to our house. Can you guess what happened? The door was kicked in and we go in and uh, some of our stuff is stolen. Uh, it's there. And this is, it's sad, but it's also kind of funny. I, I think they were looking for drugs because we've seen strewn around all these pills of fluoride. <laughs> kind of hard to get high on fluoride. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I remember thinking at that, that time, you know, it was difficult to go to sleep that night. Have you, have you faced that before? It was difficult. And what would have changed that? A police officer right in front of my house would really help with that. Or what if your house was right beside a police station? You, you would think you would get a whole lot less of a problem with that. So God wants to give you the gift of a safer life. Now, how do you open this gift of a safer life? I'm going to tell you, but first, we got to open one more gift. Here it is. Now, some of you are really going to love this, especially if you had a bad night last night. You're it. God wants to give you the gift of good sleep. How many of you need some good sleep? Just not now, please. Okay. God wants to give you the gift of better sleep. Now, how do you open this gift of a safer life and better sleep? You can open and receive this gift by thinking about what you are doing before you do it. Now, this is kind of a duh point, but I'm going to say you got to think about what you are doing before you do it. Let me give you an example here. Some people get involved in adultery and a lot of different things, and they think about, you know, should I do this or not? Actually, they don't really. They just jump right in. Let's just put, put all this aside. You know, I love this person. You know, this person is better for me. And they just go right out after it. They don't stop and think, this is going to affect my kids. They don't stop. This is going to affect my wife, my, my husband. This is going to affect our, my finances. This is going to affect my entire life. All they can think about is, I want this. Let's do this right now. 
They need to stop and think about what they're doing. Now, if you got involved in something like that, do you think you're going to sleep well at night? No. You're going to be worried that something is going to be found that's going to find you out. You're not going to be able to sleep at night. Uh, are you going to be a little bit worried that the other spouse might find out? Think there might be a fight? You know, I've heard stories of people getting shot over these kind of situations that happen. When you don't think about what you are doing before you do it, it leads to a lot of problems. Uh, teens, let's see, I'll talk to my, to my son, Micah. One day you're going to have a job, and uh, you're supposed to be there in the morning at 7 o'clock. And Jordan calls you and, and says, hey, do you want to go to Six Flags together? And you're like, uh, yeah, let's go. I, I know i got the job, but let's just go and do it. What does he need to do in that moment? Think about how is this going to affect me? I might lose my job. I'm not going to get the car that I need. We need to stop and think before you do things. Now, if you do that, you're going to have a safer life. And you're going to have a, what is, what's the other one? It's better sleep at night. All right, let's look at the scripture. Proverbs 3, 21, 23, and 24. My child, don't lose sight of common sense. You, would you like the, the Joel translation for this? Yeah. My child, don't be dumb. Sorry. <laughs> have some discernment. Think about this. Hang on to them. They keep you safe on your way. And your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You know, if you're living the way that God wants you to, you don't have to fear about somebody finding out, do you? You don't have to fear about uh, the ramifications of something that you did. You can go to bed without fear. You can lie down and sleep soundly. How many of you have, don't raise your hand, have gossiped about somebody and all of a sudden you're wondering, is that other person going to tell them? And all of a sudden, you're thinking about it all night, right? That can happen. Here's the trick. Don't gossip against them, and you don't have to worry about it, right? You can sleep soundly. All right, let's look at the last one. And I have a backstory with this, too, but uh, I wish I had. I could have this beautiful fountain in front of you, but this is the best that I can do. <laughs> all right, here. Anybody hot in this place? I can help you out. <laughs> All right, uh, God wants to give you an encouraging life. And I want you to, to think about uh, a refreshing, when you look back on your life, that you're not disappointed, that there is encouragement for you. God wants to give you that gift. Now, the story behind this is uh, my cat, Ruby, sometimes loves to get up on her couch. And she wants to, she's really uh, great with manicures, so she loves to kind of sharpen her nails on our couch and other things around the house. And our most safe and humane way is to do this. And all of a sudden, when water gets on uh, Ruby, she just dashes off like her kryptonite. But that same thing to Samuel, Samuel absolutely loves this thing. I just go like this, and he gets under it. And he looks like smiling all over the place. It's refreshing to him. And God wants our lives to be refreshing when we stop and think about them. So how do we open this gift of an encouraging life? We do it by guarding what and who you allow a place in your heart. I may offend some people here. How many of you listen to country music? Or have, let's be, we'll be nice. How many of you have ever listened to country music before? I have. I grew up on it. I was down in Georgia. Okay. Uh, what is, call out some of the, the main things of country music. Cheating. Cheating. What else? Cheating. Drinking. Cheating. Losing everything. Your dog dies. You need everything. <laughs> now, what happens if you listen to song after song after song after song about drinking? Uh, cheating, partying, if you listen to that over and over and over again, do you think it might affect you just a little bit? You want to join in. Yeah, I mean, because they play this nice music and they make it seem like the best thing, you know, ever. And even the best of us, our standards can begin to drop, you know, and well, maybe this isn't as bad as what we thought that it is. And what's happening is, 
country music is a preacher. Uh, I am right here, and I am preaching to you. And hopefully, if you come every single Sunday, I'm going to make a difference in your life. Why? Because I'm teaching you from the Word of God. It's important. But what about the music you listen to? It's a preacher, too. It's preaching to you, and it has the power to affect you if you let it. Okay. Now, those of you that have listened to country music in the past, just go ahead. I'm done. I'm not talking about it anymore. Let's move on to rock and roll. <laughs> How many of you listen to rock and roll in your past? Okay. That's not like that evil uh, country music. Is it? No. <laughs> I, uh, I worked, uh, Brian, I think, actually worked at this place, too. Kimco, yeah. I worked at Kimco down it was in Portland, or Portland, when I first moved up to, to Maine. And uh, the guy that, I worked in shipping, and the main guy there turned on one station, and it was had to be the raunchiest station that ever was. You know, curse word after curse word, you know, terrible music. And I am there. I'm a youth pastor having to listen to this junk. And I'm just praying. I'm trying to sing other songs because it, it gets into your mind. If you listen to curse word after curse word after curse word, you're going to think of it, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you have to be very careful. So on another realm, if you have the ability to protect yourself, to guard yourself from what gets into your heart, by all means, do that. Proverbs 4, 5 through 6 says, above all else, what? Guard your heart. Protect it. Why? Because it's the wellspring of life. If you're feeding yourself junk, it's going to pollute the waters that come out. Now, let's look at this uh, main point here. Uh, the greatest gifts are the ones that have to be received to be enjoyed. Uh, to be enjoyed. Now, this is really a duh moment. I kind of talked with you about this before. You know, God has all of these wonderful gifts for you, but they are absolutely useless if you never open up and use them. In the same way, everybody raise your Bible up just for a minute. This is a wonderful, amazing thing, but if it just gathers dust on your shelf, is there any power in that? There's only power when you open it up and do what it says. So I want you to think about your heavenly father who desperately loves you. And all he is asking is, hey, you know, I care about you. If you'll follow my ways, if you'll open these gifts, I want to give you all of these things. But it's conditional. You have to open them. Uh, there is a uh, pastor friend that we had. Uh, her name was uh, Jessica Arnold, and she gave me permission to share this story. She was teaching at a uh, youth rally, and she told about her childhood. And one day she was gathered with her, like, three uh, friends that were girls. And they were talking, and her other friends were saying, man, your parents are awesome. I wish I had parents like you. And she's like, my parents? My parents were so strict. I couldn't go to any parties. I couldn't do anything. They basically said, they like ruined my life. They were too strict. And then one of the girls began to talk. And since we're in a somewhat mixed room, I'll, I'll just say that at one of those parties that they went to, all three of those girls, something bad happened to them. And they said to her, I wish I had parents like you that said no. Because that wouldn't have happened to me that night. And I just stop and think about that with these gifts that God wants to give us. You know, some people look at these gifts and what's required to open them. And they say, this is restrictive. God, how could you be telling me not to do this, not to do that? It's out of a heart of love that God tells us all of these things to protect us and give us his best. Amen. Melanie, uh, would you mind coming up? So how do we open these gifts? Here's just your reminder. Follow God's rules. Be loving and faithful. Trust God and his way. Realize that you need God. Shun evil. Give, God, give to God first. Think about what you're doing before you do it. And lastly, guard your heart. And God wants to bless you with all of these things. 
Can you stand with me just for a moment? You know, I said that the greatest gifts that, that we can be given are those that we have to receive to enjoy. I want you to think about this right now. For God so loved the world that he gave the gift. He gave the gift of his one and only son that whoever believes in him, whoever opens that gift of Jesus, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, I'm new here. I don't know all of your faces. Maybe there's some of you here that you are not right with God. Or maybe you have never asked Jesus into your heart. And maybe some of you are under this delusion. And it's this. You know, God is a loving God. He never will send anybody to hell because he's just a, a loving God. The truth is, he is a loving God. But there is a condition. You have to receive Jesus into your heart. Jesus' sacrifice, all that he went through on the cross, benefits everybody who opens this gift. But it does not benefit you if you never open the gift of Jesus, if you never receive him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Would you mind bowing your heads, closing your eyes just a moment, and those that are coming to pray with people, would you go ahead and, and get in place? I would be amiss if I didn't give this opportunity. Is there anyone here today that you are either running from God or you have never received Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior? And you say, today, I want to open the gift of Jesus. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. I want to live for Him all my days. If that's you or you want to learn more about Jesus and what it means to be a believer, would you raise your hand right in this place? Anybody at all, you need to get right with God or you've never asked Jesus into your heart. Lord, I pray that if there is anyone in this place that needs you, that they wouldn't walk out of this place without receiving you. The greatest gift that has ever been given is you, Jesus. We thank you for what you've done for us. And Lord, I, I pray for every single person that's here. And I want every person to think about your gifts that are offered here today. Lord, may they not sit on the shelf. Lord, help us to trust you and open every single gift by being obedient to you. And I want you to think, uh, folks, today, are there one of those areas where you've kind of gone astray? You haven't opened that gift yet. I want you to pick out one of those that you need work on. And just between you and God, I, I just want you to say, God, I want to, to grow in this area. Will you help me? I ask in your name. Amen. We're going to uh, sing a song together. And the Lord speaking to you. Just to encourage you. There's people here to, to pray with you. And also, you know, you can talk to God on your own during this time. Are you hurting and broken right outside that will give us time for people to enter safely Lord Jesus we thank you for meeting us here we want to stay longer and I look forward to that day when we can all be together again yes. we can linger in your presence 
But Lord, I pray that your word would sink down deep into yes. the heart of each and every person. And Lord, may we live it out. Yes. And may we experience all the gifts that you have for us. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Love you each. I wish we could give you a big hug right now, but we have no service starting. <laughs> God bless you.